Welcome to the Garlic Marketing Show. This is my first Garlic Marketing Show from my kitchen. And I've got an incredible guest, a very important topic, sales as a professional. Why you need to become a salesperson, what it can do for your business, whether you're a lawyer, a doctor, a dentist, if you're an internet marketing professional, if you have an agency, why you need to learn sales. And before I get, I talk to Steve, of course, this podcast is brought to you by storycruise.com. You know, it's the ultimate resource for finding videographers and editors and marketers that no business, no ROI. One of the best videos you can get is your video case stories. If you go to storycruise.com slash case story, uh, you'll find the case story opportunity score. You'll find out how much money you are missing by not using case stories. All right, Mr. Steve Fretzen, thank you so much for being on the Garlic Marketing Show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really looking forward to a uh, fun conversation. Yeah, and I'm, I was so excited. You know, our, our mutual friend Jeremy introduced us. And when I start talking to you about your background and your sit, you know, especially helping lawyers and other professionals with sales, I was like, this is something we need to talk about because all the weeds in the world cannot help if you are not a good salesperson. Well, it can help, but you are wasting a lot of money and time if you're not a good salesperson. Before we get into how to be, a better salesperson, you know, whether whoever you are, tell me a little bit about how you got into coaching people and helping people do this. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm an old school sales guy. I, I uh, started selling when I was 16. And if you're over 40, you might remember Kinney shoes, the great American shoe store. If you're under 40, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but it was partners with Foot Locker, So if that helps. And I, I just enjoyed not only helping people, but also the idea that there were certain techniques or things that I could do to, you know, be more helpful, like offering with their shoes, uh, a purse or socks or skid pads or whatever. And I just learned sort of little silly things that, uh, you learn when you're, when you're new at sales in high school. And I also was competing as a part-timer against other stores, other part-time salespeople at other shoe stores. And I just enjoyed the competition of, of that, of, of, of who, who sold the most socks or whatever it was. And that's not where things, that's where things started. But I, I went through and went through college and all that. And I ended up um, kind of working a number of, of, of sales jobs and moved up the food chain into franchise sales after about 10 years and really got into the business of selling businesses and helping people grow businesses. And a big part of that is sales. And it ended up being my favorite part of my job wasn't actually selling businesses, it was working with the business owners, taking them by the hand and saying, hey, let's go out today and let's go sell. And they hated it and I loved it. And somewhere in the middle, we, we found some, you know, some mutual ground. And, but things didn't really change for me until I hired a coach myself, um, someone that was able to give a look at what I was doing right and doing wrong or doing in a way that wasn't being effective. And I learned so much from this coach that eventually I, I, my numbers were way up. I was killing it. I was just doing great, like better than I'd ever done. And I, I really did well in, 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 in from a monetary perspective. And, and I was always kind of the top guy. And I said, how do I do what you do? He says, well, you pay me a lot of money and, and I'll show you how I said, okay, so that's what happened. And a year later uh, or so I was in my own business as a sales coach, um, developing uh, processes and taking, you know, things from all different, you know, different places to make sure that I had all the tools to help my clients to be successful. And before we get into how you made them successful, let's talk about a little bit about some of your successes. Tell me about what you've helped people accomplish in the sales arena. Well, I think mostly it's about efficiency, right? I think that, that, that buyers have changed, especially in the last 15, 20 years with uh, the internet and, and all of the competition and how easy it is to get, you know, information these days. Um, it's just, it's never been harder to, to deal with buyers. They're just much more intelligent and knowledgeable than they used to be. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but the problem is that we then fall into the trap or many of my clients fell into the, fall into the trap of, of, of just kind of being run through the mill. I want a price. I want, you know, what does this cost? What, tell, you know, give me all this free consulting and maybe I'll mm -hmm. talk to you again. Right. And, and they usually finish it up with this sounds great. This amazing stuff. Give me a couple of weeks to think about it. I'll get back to you. And, you know, salespeople around the world just, just thought that was great. And that's, this means they're interested. And what they're really saying to you is no, I'm not going to do business with you, but I like you and I don't want to hurt your feelings. So as a buyer, it's just easier for me to blow you off. 
And so there's all these things that I, that I help, help lawyers and, and professionals with that they just aren't able to see themselves uh, because they're not following a more updated process than maybe what worked 10 or 20 years ago. I want to get into that process, but let's get through the little mindset because I feel like this is a really common mindset. I don't know many attorneys. I don't know, my, and I've worked with attorneys for years. I don't many doctors, dentists that would ever consider a themselves as salespeople, much less hiring a sales coach. Why, you know, what do you think stops them and why do they need to get over that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so first of all, the word sales in legal and, and for doctors and for, I mean, that's a dirty word, right? I mean, they'll call it anything but sales. They'll call it marketing. They'll call it business development. They'll call it, you know, anything other than sales. And that's just because no person that went through medical school, law school, dentistry school, anything ever did it to become a salesperson or to have to sell services. Back in the day, the services were just there. Business just happened. And yeah, there were some people that gland handed at the country clubs to make it happen. And, and we know who they are. But at the end of the day, that was a couple few people at the top. It wasn't everyone is now responsible to go out and get clients and make sure that their firm survives or that their firm thrives. So that's the first thing is, is looking at sales and saying, look, this is not a dirty word. What you're actually doing is your, the, the art of sales, if you will, is identifying problems that you can solve. And if I have a cavity and a dentist can identify that there's a cavity by looking in my mouth and then they can solve it. And so there's really no sales involved there and it's, but it's problem solution. And so really what we're doing is we're looking at how to help people get their mindset right. And the reason that they won't talk to me, and by the way, that's that's not unusual. People don't talk to me all the time about it because they're so terrified. The easiest way to explain it, and I'll, I'll put in the legal industry because that's where I spend a lot of my time. I'm, a, like, I'm like a physical fitness trainer, like a trainer at a club. And everyone that, that is around me is, is, is 400 pounds and, and about to stuff a Twinkie in their face. <laughs> and the last thing they want to hear from or deal with is their weight and about the fact that they're about to stick a Twinkie in their face. So I'm that guy that they don't want to deal with because I represent in many cases what they're not doing well or effectively, or they never signed up to do. And that's why it's so challenging being in the role that I'm in, especially working with lawyers. However, what also happens is that they self-select the ones that are most open-minded, most coachable, most interested in growth and don't say they know all the answers. They're the ones that are going to end up talking to me, which is who I really want to deal with anyway. And that open mindedness, that, that, I mean, that is one of the keys to business growth, to entrepreneurial growth. You know, we work with Gino Wickman and, you know, we had him on here talking about entrepreneurial leap. That's one of the keys of a great entrepreneur. And I think if you're listening to this and you consider yourself an entrepreneur, that's one of the things you have to do. And you have to focus on learning sales. Why you can hire a great salesperson nine times out of 10, they're not going to work if you don't get what a great salesperson does. Do you feel that that's true? Yeah. And I'll take it a step further. I mean, the biggest problem that I find with, with salespeople or, or even professional services, people that um, are, are out trying to develop business is the, and you may have heard this example before, but do you have uh, 10 years of experience doing it? Or do you have one year of experience 10 times? And that's really what's happening is that a lot of the people that are out developing business they're not really able to see what they're doing right or wrong. They're just doing what they do. They're not learning and improving, learning and improving. And another way to explain that is, uh, is a famous uh, Lombardi quote, which is practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. And that's yeah. right in the same guise of, of, you know, you're just practicing badly. You're just yep. out doing things in an improper way over and over again. And, and yeah, it works out. You end up with business maybe from sheer effort or, or force of will, but you're not really being efficient. And for lawyers is an example or people that are billable, right? In agencies, mm -hmm. it's all about time. And if yep. you're wasting your time, I mean, one of my marketing clients right now, he would spin his wheels for six months or a year chasing after a mid-market company that he thought was a perfect fit. And they would just use him and abuse him for free advice and never sign up. And he never realized how much time that was taking away, not only from his billable hours and from the clients that he could move forward, but it also took an emotional toll because he was living in hope that this deal was going to come through and make his year. When in fact, if he had a good sales process or strategy, he could have figured out in the first hour, hour ever, not a year, an hour that, this, that these people are never going to use him and why. 
And that's really what it's all about these days. It's about knowing and getting the truth and, and getting things to be real. And that's where a lot of people miss the boat. What do you say to people that say, I, I'm not a salesperson. I'm never going to be a salesperson. I mean, do you just walk away from them? Is there a mindset shift that can happen in them that they can become a better salesperson and improve their business? So, so I would ask a few questions like, are you happy with where your business is right now? And do you want to stay there? Um, are you interested in growth? Can you handle the growth? Um, what do you not like about sales? What makes you feel dirty? Well, I don't like, I don't like having to sell people my services. Well, then don't. I actually teach something called sales free selling, which is uh, music to a lot of people's ears. <laughs> what I'm actually teaching are specific skills around uh, very consultative, listening, questioning, empathy, qualifying. So there ends up being a lot less, if, if any, pitching, presenting, convincing. Like those, those words are dirty to me. I don't want to sit and teach someone how to convince someone how to do something, how to trick people. That's the worst. And I hate being sold to. So it really, the, the whole model of sales has changed to, to being much more consultative, which actually should take away the dirty taste out of the individual's mouth so that they can go and basically go out there to help solve problems. And that's really the name of the game is how many people can you get in front of that have problems where you might be the perfect solution and are you getting in front of them? And if not, then that's like a, a great brain surgeon not helping save lives because that brain surgeon doesn't have people calling, calling him. All right. And we'd like to think that a reputation can do that and it does help, but at some point you also have to look at being proactive and how you're going to grow things too. I think that's a very important point to make because there's so many people that I see that make this mistake. They think that they're going to become technically better and that will grow their business. We see it. I mean, lawyers go take more CLEs yeah. and, 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 you know, and doctors learn something else and marketers too. I see that all the time with marketers. I'm going to add this new thing. I'm going to add this new thing. And that's actually hurting your business instead of selling less, right? And, and being better at selling that thing. What are the first steps to, to getting the shift I, I still think it needs to be called sales. No, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm just making the point that, that yeah. that's a scary word to a lot of people. Yeah. And if you think of it as a consultative thing that you're helping someone out, like you said, you know, it's a good mind shift. So yeah. I want to start, where should I look now in my process to start improving my process? I'm getting some leads. What should I be doing to start improving my process if I'm a professional? Well, I mean, obviously you need to get educated on, you know, how to plan and execute. And I've got a few books that are helpful on Amazon. Uh, and there's obviously, you know, thousands and thousands of books, but the, the problem with books and, and I'll include mine in this too, is it doesn't get into the weeds as far as what each individual needs, where their deficits are and what they need to focus on. So I think, you know, having a conversation or either looking at yourself and saying, where are my, where am I not, where am I not hitting the mark? And if you're hitting the mark on every level and you're growing at the degree that you want and, and just there's nothing missing, you're as efficient as you can be, then you're doing great. Keep it up. But if you feel like there are areas that you're not hitting the mark, that may be something you want to make a list of and then start to look at how to fix those. But if we want to get into the granular element about like, where do I start working with people, for example, you know, um, let's say they've already signed up to be a client with me. The very first thing we do is we start looking at um, you know, low hanging fruit, right? We want to look at where the business is, the targets and where the referrals are going to come from and how do we get there as quickly as possible. So you might think in your head, well, I have to go join a bunch of networking groups and that might be the answer. However, if we identify that you have a tremendously powerful list of contacts and connectors and clients, well, that may be where we want to focus because those people know you already. They have the keys to the kingdom as it, as it relates to referring you business or maybe doing more business with you and running around to a bunch of networking events, especially during you know different times like COVID, et cetera. It's not as viable. So we really want to look at putting a written plan together. And that's where I start with people because without a plan, it's like, hey, we're taking a trip through Africa and there's a lot of different dangerous things that we're going to encounter and we'll just figure it out as we go. Well, I can tell you within three days, I'm either going to get eaten by a lion or I'm going to get killed, you know, with a spear through the neck. Uh, one of those two things are going to happen. Um, but not with a plan. If I want to plan to go to Africa, you know, I'm going to have a great guide. I'm going to have a great tour. It's all laid out. It's super safe. We have protection. There's maps and, and everything's, you know, that's I'd much rather have somebody go at the market with 
with that kind of a plan than just winging it from year to year, which is what most people end up doing. Yeah, for sure. And tell us a little bit about your books before I get into this, because you've got a yeah, couple so, of them, right? I, yeah, I appreciate that. So I've got books that kind of cover, cover some ground. So the first one is called Sales Free Selling. And it's instead of re- writing a how-to book, uh, which we all know and we've all read, this is more of a story. It's a story of a coach. His name is Scott. It's me. You know, there's the secret. And uh, and he's got three different clients. He's got a uh, an entrepreneur, he's got a sales rep, and he has a lawyer. And they all enter into his program. And what I'm doing in this book is really trying to make it a very easy read for people to understand that sales is dead and that the, a new methodology is this sales-free selling approach, which I, I go through and even do a role play at the end so they can hear how an actual meeting can be conducted where sales doesn't exist where the entire engagement is about the prospect's problems and how we qualify them to make sure that they're a good fit and that, that this is going to be a win-win. And that's really what, you know, sales should be about. And it isn't for most people. Okay. The second book is called the attorney's networking handbook. But if I'm being honest, it's written for anyone that wants to be a better networker. Um, I think I start off the book talking about how no one has wasted more time networking than I have, uh, (laughs) which is sort of feels true. Um, you know, 10,000, you know, people I've met with and, 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 you know, hundreds and hundreds of events and all this stuff. And I just, I just learned a lot. And so I'm sharing these best practices of that I've learned over my, over my career. And, and I think it's really helpful to kind of, again, improve efficiency around networking. And then the most recent one is the ambitious attorney. And this is, so I've been writing for the Chicago Daily Law Bulletin for a number of years. And this is a culmination of articles uh, on all different subjects, marketing, social media, uh, planning, execution, client loyalty. So, you know, all time management, et cetera. And so it's just, it's just a, a bunch of articles that really get to the meat and potatoes of, of different, you know, parts of business development and marketing that people need to learn. Well, I mean, these are awesome resources. Uh, you know, if you go to fretson.com, we'll have the link in the show notes. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link will down, be down below. Uh, check out the book. Is it in our resource library? On, yeah, resource on- library. There's books. And then also, obviously, they're available on Amazon. So you can gotcha. just type in my name on Amazon if you want to check those books out. Yeah, and I love the idea of sales, you know, sales free selling. That's fantastic. And networking is crucial. And let's talk now it's times of COVID. Um, we're on Zoom you know, there aren't as many networking events to go to. Um, And, you know, sales have changed because I think probably a lot of professionals are hurting because they're used to someone sitting in front of them. It's hard to get a read off of someone. Talk to me about some of your techniques for now for transforming your sales process and then your networking process in the time of virtual. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, the, the sales process itself hasn't, doesn't change that much. I mean, I still have specific steps that I want my clients to follow to get specific outcomes. And I think the big change is the meetings are shorter. So instead of it being a two hour lunch where we graze over salads and, and get interrupted by waiters and staff, um, we're really focused by looking at each other in the eye. Hopefully, you know, you're looking at the, the, and I'm not doing this now, by the way, but looking at the little green dot, the camera, when you're talking to somebody in a, in a meeting, that's, that's an important thing to remember versus looking down at the person's face in the middle of the screen. Um, and I think that, you know, you're able to just be so much more efficient. I think in an average day, I was, I was getting maybe three or four appointments and now I'm upwards of even six to nine meetings wow. a day. And I've got a meeting with, uh, with a guy in Ireland. And then later that day I'm in California and then I'm back in Chicago all in the same day. Well, what salesperson realistically could ever say that before Well, nobody could. Right. And so this is an opportunity to really dig in and actually grow business uh, because people are not only easier to get to, uh, but they're, they're more accessible, but you can be really efficient with how you spend your time meeting with people and really engaging with them. Yeah. And you can be more efficient with their time too, which they respect. Oh, abs- absolutely. So for example, lawyers want to meet with high level CEOs and G- general counsels. Uh, we call them GCs. And, you know, that's not an easy meeting yet because, you know, they know it could be half a day getting to the restaurant, meeting for a couple hours and then leaving. Now it's a 45 minute meeting. They're on, they're off. And you can potentially, you know, really build some good relationships or get some business. And how are you getting those meetings? How, how do you suggest, you know, where are some ways that people are getting those meetings now? You know, if they don't know the person, are they using connections? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of that. Obviously creating lists of, 
your A, B, and C clients, and meaning A's are like your best clients that love you, B's are middle of the road, and C's are stuff that you know maybe you want to keep in touch with, or maybe you want to check in with them. Um, that could also be friends, family, could be referral partners, but there's all these people that you have relationships with, and it's time to get back in front of them on a Zoom. And obviously, if you're a LinkedIn user, that's a no-brainer. In fact, just this morning, I was with my client, Alex, and I've probably referred him I don't know, like 10 other attorneys to talk to that could refer in business. And he's referred me a few things, but I went, I literally had him on the phone. I said, Hey, do you mind? Or on the zoom? I said, do you mind if I pull your LinkedIn up? I want to just walk through a couple lawyers that I'm interested in meeting and see if you know them. And he, we went through like three pages of LinkedIn lawyers for him to go through. And he's, you know, at the end of the day, he selected three or four that he's going to make a high level quality introduction for and how hard was that for me? I mean, how much time did that take and how much effort? I mean, it couldn't have been less. So this is the stuff that we need to use technology and zoom and these kinds of in our, in our creating lists and scripts all, all relate to being able to get high level value meetings. And that's the name of the game today. It is. It's what it was before. It just can be more efficient. Is there a format that you use for those meetings to make sure that, you know, it's, it's not a salesy networking meeting. So if we're talking about someone new that I have never met with, but, but we think there might be synergies for us to work together. For example, someone that I met at a networking event or a virtual event, we thought there might be synergies and now we're having this, you know, 45 minute zoom. Is that a good example? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So one thing that I, that I like to do and in, in teach is I like to set agendas because we know that these networking meetings can go off the rails fast. Right. And so the idea that I'm meeting with someone, I want to build some relationship, but once we kind of get through that and we talk about our kids, our pets, our cats, our dogs, our, or, or if even better, if I've done some research and I know that they're, um, you know, they've got a really cool video that they put together and I watched it and I'm complimenting them on the video and how's that going. And that's a great way to build relationship. I'm going to establish an agenda where we can make this time really effective for both parties. And so that would sound something like this. And, and I'm going to ask you to role play with me through this. Okay. Sure. We'll make it interactive. So, you know, we could probably talk about our cats all day, uh, Ian, but listen, I know how valuable your time is and, and mine as well. And I thought just to make the best use of, of, you know, the 40 minutes we have left in our networking exchange, would it be okay just to set up a little game plan for us? Of course. Great, great. So I know, you know, we've got a little time left. And from my perspective, the purpose was just to see if there's a fit. I think, you know, we do some similar things and we may be in the position to refer one another. Is that sort of how you saw things? Of course. Yes. Great, great. And one way to, to, to really be effective with our time is, is just to split up the talk time. Really, you know, if you could take 15 minutes and share more about your business and how you help people, and most importantly, who are you looking to meet? And then if I could take 15 minutes and do the same, I think that would really give us an opportunity to kind of split things off in a, in a way that we would really get to learn about each other in, in this kind of a meeting. And then listen, at the end, if we feel like there's some synergies and we want to take next steps, maybe even like a baby step, just to make one introduction for each other, just to kind of test the waters a bit. I think that would be a great next step. Again, if it makes sense, is that something you'd be open to as well? Perfect. Yeah. Okay, great, great. So let's talk. All right. So think about that in a 45 or I don't know, 45 second a minute uh, agenda you know, we, ac we accomplished a bunch of things. We accomplished a time, a time limit. We established that we want there to be a fit. And most important, we, we split up the talk time. And most importantly, the thing that people miss about networking that I've, I, I'm not saying I figured this out, but, but I did for myself and now for my clients is that the best way to know if somebody's worth their, their weight in networking is by giving them a task, Give them something small to do and test them out to see if they actually follow through. Because a lot of people, as you know, talk a big game, they can say the right words, but when it comes to actually executing, you know, they just blow it off. They just don't follow through or they don't care. They just, they're happy they got something, but they weren't willing to put the effort in for the other person. And that's not really networking. That's just taking. Yeah. So this is a way to sort of establish that if things look good, let's, let's try, let's try, try each other out. It's like trying on a pair of pants. You know, you just don't want to buy them and hope they fit. Let's test them out a little bit. And then if the person follows up and follows through, you know, you might be onto something long-term. If they blow you off, they don't respond to emails. They're kind of lost in the weeds and you're not getting them back. Well then good. You, you salvage something that you can end that relationship, you know, nicely in 45 minutes and be done with it versus, you know, chasing after someone and trying to get them back a hundred times. 
Yeah. So that's, that's, a, that's just an example of, of, of something that I teach to try to, again, improve efficiencies around, around networking. That's great. And it, it keeps the format down. It keeps, and you get a result. I love that. It's, it's a simple formula to remember too, which is great. And there's no crazy techniques in there. Or... No, it should be, it should be two friends having a conversation. All I'm doing is controlling the environment in a, in a, in a, a permission-based way. So I'm asking, I'm not rolling over you in this. I'm actually getting you engaged in the agenda to agree with me that this is a good way for us to spend our time. And if that doesn't work for somebody, either that might be a warning sign that they're, you know, that they're not interested in efficiency or, or helping each other. Maybe they were just there to, to, to sell you a service and you, you thought it was a networking meeting. That could be a disaster. But you, know, you can figure that it's all about figuring, figuring out things more quickly than letting things drag out. Love it. Love it. And um, as far as, you know, sales in the time of COVID, how has that changed? I mean, I know you say the process hasn't changed, but, uh, you know, I feel like Zoom meetings, it's tough to have, you know, you might have had a two or three hour sales process before. Now it's like two and three hours in Zoom is near impossible. (laughs) Yeah, you're not going to get too many people, too many takers on that. How have you coached your clients to adapt and how do you close better on Zoom now? I think it, again, comes back to process. If you're having a two or three hour meeting, I would challenge that maybe your process is skewed, that maybe you're not asking focused questions. Maybe it's going off the rails on topics that aren't relevant. And I get that there needs to be a bond and there needs to be some relationship built. But I think that can happen at the beginning of a meeting for, you know, five to 15 minutes. And then, you know, the rest of the hour could be spent doing, you know, some real in-depth questioning to try to identify the person's issues, needs, and what they're trying to accomplish to see if there's a fit. And if there is, maybe that takes you to the second meeting where you're going to make a presentation or the second meeting where you meet their boss and get get that next step. But I I don't think it's going to happen in in one call that's, you know, you know, a long call. So I think we just have to be very careful about next steps that every meeting I have, either leads to a next step where we're moving things forward or we're, we're, we're deciding it's not a fit and we're moving it out. And that's something that's very hard for people to, to, to let go. And I'll give you an example of something that I say in, in, in an agenda. So you just heard my networking agenda and you're going to notice, I'm not going to run through the whole prospect prospect agenda, but something that I do at the end of setting an agenda. So let's say that you're a prospective client for me. Okay. You're someone that, um, you know, let's say that you're a lawyer and you're looking to grow your book and you refer to me. So we spent some time getting to know each other. I went through the agenda. The last point of the agenda that I would say before we move into the questioning uh, where I'm going to try to identify your needs, pains, et cetera, is, you know, Ian, at the end of, at the end of our meeting, you know, typically one of a couple of things are going to happen. Okay. We're going to decide that there's synergies, there's fit, there's a great, you know, connection here. And we're going to talk about specific steps to move things forward. Okay. On the other hand, if you or I just don't see eye to eye, or we don't feel there's a fit or the timing isn't right, whatever the case might be, it's okay just to tell each other that it's a no or a no for now. And let's just leave friends. Is that something you'd be open to exploring it to either moving it forward or just deciding that it isn't, that it may not be a fit? Of course. That sounds great. Okay. So what's the benefit now we're out of role play or scene or however we want to end it. But what's the, what's the benefit of, of right in the first 10, 15 minutes of a meeting, setting the groundwork for let's move it forward or let's end it nicely. Yeah. I mean, that's huge because you, then you're not wasting time. If it's, if it's a no, maybe's are the worst. Maybe's are the worst because what it does is it not only drains your time, but it drains your soul. It makes you it makes you feel bad when you live in hope that the five deals that are going to make your year are all blowing you off and blowing smoke and they're not going forward. So what I'd rather do is I'd rather have people get real with me. And of course, I have to follow now the rest of the sales free selling process to make that happen. I can't now go back to pitching people because pitching is the is the killer of deals. Because Think about objections. Why do objections happen? Why do people object to your, you've got fees that are not not low, right? You're top of the field. So you're not going to be the cheapest guy out there. What happens if you start off the whole meeting talking about your fees, your rates? Oh yeah, it's done. It's done. We're done. We're done. So that's going back to a mantra that I've, I've been using for years. Prescription before diagnosis is malpractice. Yep. 
see, and yes. that's the problem is that what buyers want is prescription, but what we can't give them is the prescription because we haven't diagnosed properly. So the agenda sets up the ability to diagnose. Once we diagnose and qualify, then we can present, but what are we presenting? We're presenting much better solutions because we spent the time diagnosing and finding their pain, their fear, their gain, their, their, their reason for changing. If somebody doesn't have a reason to change, are they going to pay you 20 grand for videos if they have no reason to do so? Nope. Hell no. No, it's not going to happen. So we need to spend our time sitting in the mud, splashing around with the prospect to ensure that we understand them at every level. Then we're going to be in a much better position not to give up rates and information up front, but at the end, which is really a better, or by the way, not give them at all. I mean, I leave most of my meetings that don't work out without them ever knowing about my services or ever knowing about what my fees are. Because if they're not going to get past the quality control, which I've established where they've earned the right to get that information because it's a fit, because they're qualified, then why am I giving them information that's not relevant to them anymore? Yep. Right? It doesn't right. make sense. So there's, this is where all this process comes into play. And, and again, with it, there's, there's empowerment without it you know, you still might be doing great. I mean, people still have need for your services. You came highly recommended and that's fine. But I'm at a point in my career where I just, I just have no time to waste. I, every, you know, I either want to spend time with my family. I want to spend time doing hobbies that I love, or I want to work with serious people. Like that's it, right? I don't have to time to spin my wheels on, on people that aren't serious. Exactly. Or don't respect your, your rates and don't see the value in working with you. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, on the, a little bit on the flip side, and this is something I always think is that, you know, if you want to be good at sales, you have to be accepting of the sales process too, on the other side, because I, I get that a lot of times, you know, we work with lawyers or anyone else. They're like, well, how much, how much? And I'm like, well, how much is it for brain surgery? How much is a divorce? All right. And they're like, well, I can't tell you that. I'm like, exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, how much is it to make a great motion picture? <laughs> you know, I, I love to ask, I love to ask how much does a bag of groceries cost? That's a great one. Right. Because what's in the bag. And by the way, is it whole foods or cub foods? I mean, very different. You know, my wife just went to Walmart to get, she's like, I can't believe how cheap it is. I go, yeah. Compared to whole foods, you're going to get a bag of groceries for 50 bucks at, at whole foods. You get three items, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it, it, but that's why it's so important to have a process because if you're just getting grilled by buyers about services, rates, free consulting, wow. I mean, that'll just drain your, drain your soul of, of any energy, positive energy that you have. Yep. Completely, completely. Um, so speaking of process, tell me a little bit about your process and what people can expect as we've talked about, it, and you've gotten some great results for people. And I love hearing the results and some more of the results and a little bit about working with you and when people see those results. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I've, I've really have two deliverables that I provide and people have to be qualified for both. So the first step is, you know, if someone's interested in growing, you know, they need to email me and, 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 and you know, and, and set up a meeting so we can get to know each other. And, and again, um, I, I want to spend some time really identifying where their gaps are. So I'll give you an example. I have a, a lawyer that I spoke to this morning who was referred to me by another lawyer. And we went through, and this guy's, in anyone's estimation, this guy's absolutely killing it. I mean, he is, he's an equity partner at this big firm. He's got his, you know, the world on a string. Well, sure enough, I spent, 45 minutes on, on a zoom call with this, this delightful guy. And I was able to, to literally fill a half a page of notes of things where I was able to identify improvements, where I was able to identify gaps where this guy is essentially as good as he is. He's not a sales guy. He's just super good at what he does. He's, he's becoming well-known at the firm. He's getting, he's getting, he's got brought in on deals and he also does, he's not too shy about, about, you know, asking for things. But I found so much money. Like he could, he's about a million dollars right now. I can get him to like two or three million in a year because wow. there's that much opportunity that's just, it's almost like if you can imagine a, like a pile of money sitting on a table and he's just kind of walking around it, not walking into it, walking around it. And so that's my, if I could say that's my gift to society is I have such a trained eye for finding money, for finding gaps or inefficiencies because I've been there. I've been doing this for 20 years. I mean, if there was something I haven't seen, I'd be shy. I'd love to see something I haven't seen quite frankly, because I'm, I, I'd like to, I'd like the challenge of, of having to research it and figuring it out. 
But right now, the way things sit, um, I'm, I'm identifying that they're a good fit for me, bringing them into a program. It's either training and coaching because they need to learn all these skills. They need to be held accountable. They need to work with a coach. So think about Phil Jackson, Michael Jordan, right? I'm looking for Michael Jordan's. Michael Jordan's looking for Phil Jackson. We can, we can work like that, okay? The other thing that I provide is, let's say that they're, they're doing fine on those two points. I also run peer advisory groups where I can take high-functioning lawyers that are already doing great, put them in a, on a team with other high-functioning lawyers that are all interested in growth and development, and I have them work as a team to share ideas, to help each other solve problems, and I really act as a facilitator to help them focus and, and, and keep it top of mind every single day, week, month. Um, so that's, that's going to be, and a lot of my clients that go through the training, coaching and training end up in those, those, uh, round tables, which I, which I love, which I love running. So the first thing I do with people is, is identify that they have a need. They talk to me, I figure out, you know, based on their gaps and, and their needs, what type of program they need. Once they get into that program, we start working. Usually it's, it's about six to nine months that we're together, uh, almost like going and getting an MBA, but 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 while you're getting the MBA, you're also on the on the ground, you know, at you know doing the work. You're on the you're on you're you're in the game on the field playing the game. Okay, and the a, a best example is about a month ago I got a call from a client who's a construction lawyer, and I've shared this story a few times on my podcast, but it it just happened. It's just so it's so uh, resonated with me that when he came to me, he, he was not getting well-served at the firm he was with. They were very negative about business development. His ambitions weren't being taken seriously. And he hired me, we worked together. He started instilling these skills. He started getting out there and being really effective with how he was networking, how he was meeting with prospects, how he was getting in the door where he never thought he could. And he ended up after about a year, year and a half after working with me, leaving that firm, going to another firm, continuing to develop business and continue to leverage the skills that we worked on together. Well, sure enough, now this is I don't know, three or four years later, he calls me up and we, we talk occasionally, but he calls me up. He says, Steve, you're the first call I'm making. I go, what's up, Dan? He goes, look, I just got moved to equity. My book's at you know, two, two and a half million. I'm on the rise. Everything that we talked about four years ago about where I wanted my career to be, what I wanted to see happen, it's all come true. It's all come to realization. And I just want to thank you for being such a big part of that. And for me, like, that's it. Why do I get up every day? Why do I do, why do I do what I do? Why do I focus on lawyers and in and, and, and certain groups and professional services? It's this, this is exactly yeah. why. And, uh, and then, and then the guy's sustainable for the rest of his career. He doesn't have to hire me again. You know, he's got it built in. It's, it's like a machine now, right? He could teach, he could teach what I taught him now. And he probably will to his associates. Okay. So, this is what this is what it's all about, and and again, I I want to I want to you know pay it forward and uh, and help as many people as I can while I, while I'm around. I love it, love it. Yeah. And so yeah, you can just go to your website right, and your email address is on there. You can get set up a meeting, Steve at uh, fretzin.com, f r e t z i n dot com. There's a ton of information on there, and you've got your podcast too. I mean, we barely mentioned that, but let's tell me about what you you know. Tell me a little more about your podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really focused on on the legal community, but it's obviously can be useful for anybody that's looking to grow. I've got top marketing experts. I've got um, um, sales experts. I mean, interesting thing, like I'm bringing a lot of my competitors in the space into my podcast, interview them because, quite frankly, you know, my competition isn't them, other coaches, other trainers. It's, 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 um, it's lack of, of effort, lack of interest. It's, it's, um, apathy. So, um, this is a great opportunity for me to interview and have conversations similar to what you and I are doing Ian, to, uh, get the, get the, the, the truth out and to give tactical, actionable advice. And that's, and that's what the show is all about. Helping, helping lawyers to be that lawyer, someone who's confident, organized and a skilled rainmaker. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if you're an exception, I'm talking to lawyers, but if you're an exceptional professional, you have a duty to become a better salesperson because it's becoming more and more competitive. The, the better marketers, I, I get this all the time too, Steve. You've probably heard this. It's like, oh, this person over here, they're getting so much business, but they're a crappy lawyer. I'm like, that's why it's your duty, right? To, to do this stuff is to get, if you're a great attorney, if you're a great doctor, if you're a great dentist, it is your duty to become a better salesperson and better marketer to help more people. I'm a firm believer in that. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, you know, being a great lawyer should be the baseline. And then it's it's then how do you bring people in and, and, and develop these great long-term relationships with clients that you can keep for the rest of your career and, uh, and, and you know, build that, build that loyalty. And then uh, you don't have to work too hard when you get into your 50s and 60s. Yes, yes. Uh, well, it's been awesome to have you. Make sure to check it out, fretson.com. Uh, make sure to follow them. And best place to connect with you is social is LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn's really my home. That's where I, I, I spend a lot of time. And yeah, I'm on Facebook. Uh, but I, I, I've, you know, I think for business professionals, LinkedIn, I've been teaching LinkedIn for 16 years anyway, but I just love it. I love posting there. I love the community. I love that it's business centric. You know, I don't need to see a picture of, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, kittens and doggies. There's, there's plenty of social media for that. Uh, I like the business side of, of LinkedIn. Yeah, there's, it's a great platform. It's expanded so much in the past 10, 15, in the past five years. Yeah. Uh, it's a huge opportunity. Well, I'm going to have to have you back and teach some of those LinkedIn techniques. Yeah, I'd love, uh, to, be, love to be a part uh, of it. Yeah, well, Steve, thank you so much for being on the Garlic Marketing Show. Thank you. I appreciate it, Ian. And thank you all for listening to Steve and I. It's been uh, great. I hope you go out there, get better at sales. Everyone can always be improving their sales, no matter what level you're at. Make sure to check out Steve's podcast. And if you are a professional, even if you're not an attorney, he works with other professionals, I would give him a call for that sales coaching. Um, well, thanks again for taking us on a journey and uh, make sure to go check out Story Cruise and make sure to check out Steve.